Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's author reading and author advice on all about Canadian books. I am thrilled to have Lisa, oh my goodness, I'm losing my marbles here, Nina Montagnu as our guest. She has talked about her novel, A Diary in the Age of Water. If you missed the interview, I will put a link below in the description book box because you want to hear Nina chat about how water inspires her. There will also be a link at the end of this video. So Nina, first of all, what advice do you have for authors? Wow, you know, Crystal, I have a lot of advice. <laughs> I've been teaching writing for years and years and I could tell you lots of stuff. But here's, here's one that I, I like to give a lot of the time. Um, because authors, when they first start off, these are, you know, when we, when we begin, like I did, yes. we're scared to death. <laughs> Absolutely. We're scared of success, actually. This is something that I mentioned before in another interview. We don't realize it, but we are. And mm -hmm. the reason is, it's a good reason, because we feel vulnerable. So my advice is take courage and find something that you're passionate about mm -hmm. right from the heart yes. and let everything else fly write what's important to you write something that means something to you and imbue that in your writing and your writing will sparkle your writing will be wonderful i love that hence when you write about water you can see you sparkle Thank you. And so yeah. does it. <laughs> I sparkle. Yeah, no, it works. Every, yeah, it works. Everyone <laughs> listens to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sparkles, right? <laughs> She's talking about honest. <laughs> this is true. So, Nina, you are going to read a little bit of an excerpt from your book. Before you start reading, could you share with us why you've chosen this particular passage? Okay, because it's short. <laughs> and I can read it in a, in a short space of time. Uh, I chose it because of where it sits in the book. It's not the beginning, the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. The book is a diary that's nested in a larger story that takes place in the far future with Keo, the, the blue skinned yeah. character who yes. discovers the diary. And so what I'm gonna read is the first passage of the diary. So the first okay. entry. And each entry, this is written by a limnologist, the diary is, mm -hmm. a scientist person. And each entry, in front of each entry, she puts in a quote. And she loves Robert Wetzel's textbook, Limnology. So yes. half the quotes are from him. Yes. He's a scientist, obviously, uh, of limnology, a limnologist. So that's what I'm going to read, and that's why I'm going to read it. Fabulous. Here it goes. April 12, 2045, there's the quote. Fetch, the distance that wind or waves travel uninterrupted across open water. And that's mm -hmm. Robert Wetzel, the analogy. I remember every nuance of my mother, her deep laugh, her willowy gait, her scent, fresh and bracing as though she'd captured the outdoors. The way she filled a room with her wise and gentle essence. How she spoke in a lilting cadence. Words delivered like sparkling clear water. The way she winked at me with conspiratorial joy and called me meine Wassergeist, my water sprite. Her name was Una. Her smile came from that childhood place where the world is pure and simple. It made her eyes crease into a million golden rays her hair was a nest of dark curls that she sometimes pulled back, especially when she worked in the shed behind the house. When she came inside, she brought in the smell of rain and leaves that she wore, like an old coat you never want to throw away. Una sensed how the natural world worked. She had little formal education, yet she seemed to know more than most of my university professors. She had a keen and passionate mind which she applied to a strong environmental ethic. 
I know she loved me fiercely, but that fierceness, which extended to her passion for the planet, also had negative consequences. Like the time when she was arrested at a demonstration in Nathan Phillips Square. I was sitting in my first grade class listening to Ms. Belanger tell us about trees while the RCMP was arresting demonstrators, protesting the ludicrous American proposal to construct the Rocky Mountain Trench Reservoir in BC. When school was over, Una wasn't waiting at the front gate to take me home. I watched as my classmates left with their parents or caregivers until I was the only one left. Then I started to cry. My neighbor finally came to take me home. Mrs. Kravitz said I should stay with them until my mother came home from jail. I know she didn't mean for it to happen, but I still feel abandoned. After apologizing to me, Una explained that building the Rocky Mountain reservoirs and associated pipelines threatened to inundate and destroy several small towns and indigenous communities in the Yukon in British Columbia. Canadians had to support their government in the fight against the US predator who was wooing us with promises of shared wealth. Una sang all the time. German folk songs that her mother used to sing to her. Each day was like a glittering drop in a flowing narrative of gems. She had a way of imparting deep wisdom, like either entertaining or comforting me. One day stands out. She was wearing a bohemian layered dress that smelled of the forest. Her dark hair was pulled back in a loose ponytail. Several rogue strands hung over her right eye. It was the day Ralph tricked me at second recess into giving him my favorite Pokemon card, the sparkly Charizard. I burst into the back shed where Una was fixing our neighbor's chair and I just stood there trembling with emotion. She immediately saw that I was upset and coaxed out my story. Una then squatted to my height and looked directly at me with her intense green eyes. Don't make the mistake of thinking the bully is your friend. He was never your friend. He will never be your friend. Then she placed her hands gently on my shoulders and added with dreadful calm. You can play with the bully, but don't make him your friend. Demand his respect or you will become the bully. Then she pulled me close to her in a deep embrace and whispered, Come, Wassergeist, you liked Sparkly Mew just as much. Now she will be even more special, she winked. I burst into grateful tears as she held me. Then she left the broken chair she was fixing and took us into the kitchen, where she made us some hot chocolate and told me silly stories about the chickens in the yard. Una died today. I've lost my mentor, my friend, my link to compassion, wisdom, and unity. She would have been 65. She should have lived another 30 years at least. Why do I feel like she's abandoned me? I had so wanted my little Hildegard to get to know her grandmother better. I fear what I will become. Oh. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you so much for your wisdom you. and um, a fabulous reading. And thank you again for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. Thanks so much for having me, Crystal. It was a lovely, lovely chat. Thank you. My, my pleasure. So for viewers out there, please come back next week because I'll have another author, another behind the book story, and some more wisdom. Take care, everyone. <laughs>